Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to teach you how to simulate light refraction in Geometer Sketchpad. To get started, go to your start menu, go find Sketchpad. So we go Sketchpad right there, open her up, maximize both windows, and to get started we're actually not going to open a file, I'm going to, set, I'm going to have you set up a file for you to use. So go to File, Open, uh, go up to My Computer, open my computer, find the student save drive, the J drive in other words, and open that. Once you have the J drive open, you should find your teacher's name, open up your teacher's name, go to your period that you want, and create a new folder just for you to put all your stuff in, and label it with your last name, just like so. And then instead of opening that or opening a folder within it, you're going to go back up to my computer, all the way up to my computer, now you're going to go to Student Assign Drive, find your teacher's name, find the Rainbows folder, and open up one of the five activities available to you. The one that I'm going to be demoing is the two refractions, uh, so I'm going to open that one up and you'll see your screen pop up to life just like so. Okay, to get started I just want to take a moment to recalibrate you or re-familiarize yourself with this program. At the left you have uh, basically five tools that you can use, a selection tool, a point to draw a tool to draw points, a tool to draw circles, and a tool to draw anything straight, so a segment, ray, or line. And then you have a text tool down below. Up at the menus, you've got a file and edit, but uh, more importantly, you've got a display, which can change the thickness of a line, the color of a line, and hide or show any objects without deleting them. And the next menu over is the construct menu. You can use it to construct an awful lot of things, the ones that we'll be using will be, uh, I think, just perpendicular lines for this activity. I am going to teach you how to do something new that we haven't done before, which is to perform a transformation. And we are going to rotate a point of a given angle. So we're going to rotate. We're going to mark an angle and remember it. We're going to mark a center and remember that, and then tell it to rotate it around that center by the angle that we marked. And then over here, our favorite menu of measuring. I think we're just going to measure angles today, and we're going to use the Calculate feature. In terms of the document itself, you can see that I've got the Snell's Law formula solved for theta 2, the refractive angle. And then we've got the refractive indices of red and blue light through a various number of mediums there. And what this drawing is a drawing of is a, we're going to go air, glass, water. Okay, so basically everything is interactive. You can change the incident angle, you can change where that light is intersecting with the plane and you can also change how thick the glass is just by clicking and dragging. Right up here you've got slide bars for your refractive index for red and blue and you've got red and blue again but this time for water. So I think a great place to start would just be to adjust these slide bars and you can do this by left and right arrow keys or just by dragging the mouse but adjust them so that they match the values over in the table. All right, and you can see through the magic of editing that I've adjusted my slide bars so that these values are as close as I can with, uh, within the limits of the program that we're dealing with. So we're a couple thousands off in a couple cases, but it'll do. So let's get started. Let's refract some light. The first thing we need in order to refract some light is a reference point, and the reference point for any sort of refraction is going to be the normal line. So we need a normal line drawn right through this point of intersection. So I'm going to highlight that point. So I'm going to, well, first I'm going to clear everything just by clicking away from it. I'm going to highlight that point and I'm going to highlight the line that I want it perpendicular to. And then under the construct menu, you can find construct a perpendicular line. I'm going to make it thin and I'm going to make it black, which it already is. Sorry, I'm not going to make it thin. I'm going to make it dashed. Okay, and that will give me a normal line through the first pane of glass. Next up in Snell's Law, you need to know uh, the incoming angle, or theta 1. So in order to do that in this program, I need to have a point on both lines and a vertex. So I need a point right here. And while I'm at it, I'm going to throw a point down here. You'll see why I do that later. But I'm just going to use this point right here so that then I can, again, click away from everything and then highlight the three points that I'm interested in, and I'm going to measure an angle between those. It'll pop up over there. I'm just going to slide it up over here. So that right there is theta 1. 
and you can even right click on it and change the label of it so that it does read out theta 1 if you want. That can become tedious because we're going to have a lot of variables but it might be something that you want to do. All right, now that we have theta 1, we're going to use theta 1 along with the refractive indices to calculate theta 2 with Snell's law and then draw an angle of that measure. So in order to do calculations in this program, you need to highlight all the pieces of information that you need. So I'm going to go ahead and draw, just focus on the red beam. I'm going to put the red beam through both uh, interfaces here. So I need to know theta 1 and I need to know the interface right now for glass. So I'm going to highlight those two values so that it's all interactive and connected to my slide bars there. And I'm going to go to the measure table and go to calculate. And we're going to try to type in this formula. And you'll notice it starts off with an inverse sign. So I'm going to go find inverse sign. You'll notice that it's called arc sign. And then I need my N1 value. N1 would be for air. And that's easy to remember. That's just one. And then I'm going to multiply it by the sine. So I'm going to grab the sine function here of the angle theta 1 that I'm measuring. And since it's highlighted, theta 1 is available to me. And then I need to divide that by the n value for glass. And again, since I highlighted it, it's right there waiting for you. And you may notice that I didn't insert any parentheses around the numerator here. That's okay because the proper order of operations will maintain itself. It'll take 1 times the sine of the angle and then divide by the n value. So I like that formula. There it is. And you can see that it gives you the whole formula right there. If you want to shorten that up and call it theta 2, you may. Just like so. And then everything's nice and clean. And now once we have theta 2, we need to draw an angle of that measure from the normal line. So this is where uh, that point comes in right here, because we're going to rotate this point away from the normal line by that measure. So in order to do that, we need to tell the computer to mark that angle and mark the center of rotation, which will be point H here. So I am going to go to the transformation menu, and I'm going to say mark that angle. And if you want to mark a center, a quick, quick way to do it is just to double click on it, and you see it gets all excited briefly and or you can highlight the point and under that same transformation menu you can say mark center and it'll do the same thing after that all you have to do is mark uh, highlight the thing that you want to rotate go back to that transformation and you can say rotate and you'll see that it previews where you want to put the point and you can say yep i want one there from there that's where our red beam is going to go right through there so i'm going to draw a ray this time through there and since it's red let's make it red and since it's solid, let's make it a thin solid line. And there we go. So now we have a thin red line going from there to our next interface. And that's where we have to kind of repeat the process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a segment over the top of the ray that we just drew. And you'll see why in just a moment. So I have a segment drawn over a ray. And the reason for that is because I don't want this line right here distracting me. So I'm going to hide that ray. I could also hide that point if you don't want that point there. Why not? Let's get rid of that thing too. It's still there. It's just hidden. And then we can just start our problem over again, except this time we're going to use this interface right here. So to get started, I want a perpendicular line to that, and I want it to go through that point. So you can construct a perpendicular line again. Uh, it looks like we're going to have to change color like that. And I believe we're going to have to do dashed again. Yep. So now we've got a normal line to this interface, and we basically repeat the process by putting uh, a point right here so we can measure the angle, which, by the way, you should realize that this is a parallel set of lines, and this is a parallel set of lines, so theta 2 is going to equal the next angle that we measure. We'll, we'll name it theta 3. But you should know that the next this measure that we have here, h, whatever, and this, is going to equal 30.09 in our drawing. Anyway, you're going to measure that, and then you're going to rotate this point away from the normal line again. So, without further ado, I will measure that, and I'll be right back. And there we have it. You'll notice that it matches theta 2. And once we have theta 3, now we need to find theta 4, our final outgoing ray using Snell's law. And this time we're going to go from glass to water. So I'm going to need the end value for glass and water right there. So I've got all the proper information highlighted. I'm going to go to the measure calculate menu and I'm going to type in that formula again. I'm going to go arc sine. 
This time I'm going to go N1, which is I'm in glass going to water, so I need the R N value for glass. I'm going to multiply that by the sine of the highlighted angle, theta 3, and then I'm going to divide that by the N value for water, and that will be our formula. Once that's calculated, I've got 37.31 degrees in this spot, but I'm going to rename that theta 4. And now that I have my final outgoing angle, I need to measure 37.31 degrees away from this line, so I'm going to mark that angle, I'm going to mark this center, and I'm going to highlight this point and go ahead and rotate it. It's going to preview it there. I'm going to say, yep, that's where I want it. I'm going to draw a ray through there, and it looks like it's black and dashed, so I want thin and red. And that is my red beam done. And you can see that it is totally interactive just by changing the initial angle of incidence. Everything is calculated and it figures it out for me. So from there, to figure out where the rainbow is going to go or where the rainbow appears, you basically just repeat that process except do everything for blue. So you can go ahead and do that on your own. I'm going to just kind of, through the magic of editing, just show you what the final result looks like once you've done that. And once you have everything completed, you get a little something that looks like this. You'll notice that I hid all the objects, even the normal lines, and I have a red beam just slightly getting separated from a blue beam here. And it's all, once again, it's all interactive on this. So the the shallower this angle is, the more the light beams separate. And you notice they don't get very much separation at all. So this is with correct values for uh, glass and water. And you notice that they aren't very different from each other. Uh, if you change that, so now I'm going to make things incorrect. Uh, you can, like if I increase the end value, you'll notice that the blue light deflects more or bends more. And thus I get a greater separation between red and blue. Um, so this was a handy trick if you ever if you found yourself having trouble clicking on the red line in, instead of clicking on the blue line when you wanted to or whatever uh, you can s temporarily adjust the end value to bend the light more or less so that you get greater separation between the colors but check it out you've got a fully interactive little prism of sorts creating a rainbow so for the next activities, you have the choice of doing a diamond or a single interface uh, or, of course, the raindrop, which you should definitely do. Uh, just keep in mind that drawing the normal line will be a little bit challenging. Uh, you just have to use some key ideas from geometry. That's all I have for you today. I'll see you in the lab.